Sumit Naga, good to speak to you, bro. Uh, how are you feeling just going into the Aussie Open? Are you feeling fresh? Uh, I know it was a rough one at the, at the Murray Bank uh, Classic. Um, how was that? And most importantly, are you feeling healthy? Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to play uh, in a week. Uh, I've got a few practices lined up which i'm looking didn't get to practice much excited to like like i said excited very very pumped to be here to be participating in the, my first slam first major slam in australia can't complain i know you guys have have gotten just five hours every day to go out and do your thing so you're on a very strict time clock you know um you want to just tell us about that five hour window and how you had to get everything packed into that all your schedule yeah yeah yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, uh, so we would get an email every day about your practice timings. Uh, and around that time, let's say we are starting at two, you know, you would uh, you would have this 15 minute block where you would get out of your room uh, and go to the car. So you would hear a knock and they would tell you, hey, your practice time. You go there, then it's a 10, 15 minute uh, drive. Uh, once you get there, you go to a gym, which is nine, for, for 90 minutes, nine zero. And then after that, you will have a tennis court for two hours. And uh, after once you're done with tennis, you'll have an hour to eat, uh, to get some food. And then same thing back again. You know, you get back in the car, you go for that 15 minute drive and you're back in your room. Uh, it's a tight one. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> it's a, for sure, for sure. It was day by day. Everyone was just trying their best. But uh, going up against Berankis uh, in the Murray River, um, you know, I know it's just a warm-up tournament, but you went out in straight sets. Uh, how do you look upon that just going into the Aussie Open? Uh, I mean, what happened yesterday was yesterday, you know. Um, it, it's In one way, it's good because I can see that, you know, I need to work on quite a few things per, in the next five days, you know. It was a good test because... Uh, like 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 how you mentioned earlier, we didn't have to, uh, too many hours uh, on court. We couldn't play too uh, matches or practice sets with different type of players. And uh, playing Barankis was, uh, I mean, I mean, he's a very good player. You know, he's a, someone who's been in top hundred from quite a few years. And you know, to see where uh, how how the match went yesterday is, I mean, I do feel, I I I know that I should have done better. I know that. I it's I it just. Yeah, I mean, when you when you come out of the court saying, you know, thinking that you could have done better, it's just not a great feeling. And that's what I was missing. Well, you know, the draws are not out yet. So we're keeping our fingers crossed as far as you are concerned. Uh, yeah. But I'd just like to look back at your career a little bit, you know, to, for people to understand how you got here. I mean, uh, fantastic challenger win at Buenos Aires. You want to talk about that, uh, doing what you did in Argentina? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it, it's a very funny story because uh, first of all, I went there alone. You know, uh, I had no one to be with. Uh, first, I, I am, and I'm someone who who enjoys food. So, I first few days, I was just enjoying food left and right. You know, trying out different places. And uh, what happened was in my first round, I played a three hour match, and I three three hour ten minutes, and I was cramping. I was at the hot hospital <laughs> wow. and from playing uh playing uh, i mean my first round was not pretty at all you know that's it's very it's okay it so happens it's normal but i if someone told me that you're gonna win this tournament and especially like semi-finals and finals and straight sets i would say yeah man you're joking about it but uh, i i ended up winning i became the uh probably a first Indian to win a challenge at there because not too many people like to go that far, especially on, on a clay to play against South American. So I, I created a memory and I'm, I will always uh, cherish that, uh, that city, that, uh, that memory. And, and you also made it to the final in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is the uh, Banya Luka challenger. Uh, so, you know, right. two, 2019 was really an eventful year for you, wasn't it? Uh, before we get into the slam action, uh, just a little bit about that tournament. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I was coming from US Open, you know, I was in confidence playing good tennis, uh, especially going back to the surface that I really enjoy. And uh, and the tournament, I, I enjoyed it, man. I, I really like the food there. I mean, Bane Luka is very pretty. I, it's a very small place, but but good, really good people, uh, fun people. And uh, like once you start enjoying to be there, you know, once you start enjoying uh, spending time on tennis court every day, things get easier. 
Wonderful. Any other challenger that you'd like to talk about? Uh, because, you know, you've had, you've had oh, an interesting Yeah, run. for sure, yeah. for sure, for sure. Bangalore in 2017 was a very you big one. You won that, where, yeah. That was your right, second big right. win. Yeah, because I, I know that uh, uh, I knew that that gave me a lot of confidence, a lot of belief that, you know, even on, on surface like that, I can do well. I can I can be a great player as well. Bro, uh, going into that US Open, when you were up against Fed, uh, you eventually took a set and it became really world famous and you made us proud. What were you looking to do in that particular game? I mean, you can it's very easy to be overawed by the best player of all time, uh, you know, standing across uh, across the court. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, uh, when you play a match in slam, it's best of five, so it's never over till it's over. I knew I won my first set, but uh, there's still two more sets to be to be played, uh, to be won by me. Um, after I won my first set, he changed things very quickly. You know, he I, I could see it. I could feel a lot of pressure. He started making calls that he was missing. He was starting putting a lot of pressure with his first subs, high, higher percentage, uh, high, chipping and sub slices coming to the net, you know, just trying to put me in an awkward position. And it worked for him. I mean, it was sad that, you know, I, I was I was feeling better in the last set. I should have, I, I had this feeling that I could, I could pull this off, but I think, that last game, if I had won, would, would have been a different story. But, you know, I got to learn. I, I created memories. You know, it was a very nice. Uh, uh, I mean, qualifying for your first land will will always be important for, for, for a tennis player. So what did Fed say to you at the net at the end when he put his arm around I you? Just, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just say, he just said, you know, uh, good luck, uh, good luck ahead and uh, keep doing well. That's wonderful. And, you know, yeah. going up against Dominic Thiem, I mean, now he's a bona fide Grand Slam champion, Sumit. Uh, he, he, he reached those those finals, was just not seeing the luck of the draw. And then again, in this particular tournament, he's going in with that record of having lost that five-setter and being a slam champion, uh, losing the five-setter to Novak last year, and then eventually becoming a, a Grand Slam champion, beating Sasha. And you were up against him at a very strategic point of his career, as well as your career. Of course, it was a straight set loss, but uh, uh, you know, it's never easy when you're playing somebody of Dominic Thiem's caliber. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's his intensity is very high, you know, that's what I could feel it, you know, I felt like, you know, I was always the underdog, always, I mean, of course, he's a great player, don't get me wrong, but, you know, I just felt there's a lot of pressure that I need to do something, and, you know, I need to do something more and more, and that's where I made a lot of mistakes and a lot of uh, free uh, errors, unforced errors. Yeah, but but you do, you have taken away a lot from that one, isn't it? I mean, yeah, for you, sure, think, for you, sure. think, you think Dominic is ready to 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 make his place amongst the big big four because the last few years all we've been hearing about is the big four i think you could you could say that you know like especially guys been playing well it's made few uh, three finals of a slam and one winner so uh you can uh, you can uh, you can say that he's making that step and i think i do believe he's gonna be he's gonna do great things in life uh, Sumit, are you still training in Germany? I remember at one point in time you were training in Germany. Who's your coach? I remember for a brief while, right. Som Somdev was in your corner and Somdev's coach was also helping you out. A little bit about right. your, your team right now. Uh, I'm working with Sasha Nansel. He's from Germany. Uh, he's been on tour from, I think, 17, 18 years. Uh, I'm working with Milos Kalaches, who was an ex-coach of, uh, ex-trainer of uh, Somdev Dev Orman. I've been working with them from past two and a half years. And I'm enjoying it, I'm loving it. And based based out of Germany, is that it? Yes, yes, right. A uh, small small town called Paine, very close to Hanover, north of Germany. And how many hours a day would you get in? About eight hours, seven hours? No, 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 five to six, six ish. Yeah, that's where you keep it. Eight, eight becomes a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you know, with the conditioning yeah. and the court and everything. Yeah, six, yeah, six is six is 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 a good amount. Indians have always had the luck of the draw in terms of being invited by great tennis players to be their practice partners. Uh, yeah. You know, Somdev was called by Andy Roddick and Andy said, you know, come and hang with me. Back when Leander was playing singles, I remember Ivan Lendl had called him and said, you know, uh, spend some time with me in Connecticut and, and play. Uh, ha haven't any of the top 10, top 20 guys asked you to be a sparring <laughs> partner? <laughs> I've, I've heard, I mean, I'm friends with people, but... Uh, uh, I like to do my own things, you know. It's always good to hit with uh, with top players, you know. But uh, I think 
I haven't played enough tournaments where I share a lot of court, uh, a lot of hours with them. But in, in future, you will definitely see some heads coming around with uh, with my fellow friends. Just a little bit more about people who've supported you. I mean, if people don't people talk about how difficult it is in Formula One, trying to get the right team and right people to back you. Tennis is as difficult. You know, at the end of the day, AITA takes care of you or tries to only for the Davis Cup. The rest of the year, you're pretty much on your own when you're playing these challengers and satellites uh, and then eventually the ATP tournaments. So people in your corner, you want to shout out to uh, Sumit? Yeah, yeah, definitely. My uh, family first, you know, they always tried their best. You know, they made sure that I eat properly, I slept properly, you know, even though if if whatever happened, they made sure that things are right for me. Second, I would say is Mahesh, you know, Mahesh has always been in my car, corner from from past 12 years, you know, uh, I would I would thanks uh, I would say thanks to Virat uh, and his foundation and his team who's been taking care of me from past few years. You know, I'm very uh, thankful to them. As you, like you said earlier, it uh, it costs a lot, you know, because you're traveling so often. The fees for coaches a lot as well on tennis tour. And then I would also say thanks to Indian Oil right now who's been uh, part of my journey from past few years as well. That's amazing. Have you spoken to the other guys in Melbourne Park? Uh, Rohan, I believe, is, was waiting for his for his for a doubles partner because Susa unfortunately got the coronavirus. Has Rohan right, managed to get right. himself a partner? Has he he's been yes. texting people? Yeah. Oh, he, he got he got his partner. He's playing with Ben. That's lovely. Uh, and what about the other Indians? Are you are you in touch with them? With Pradnesh, with Ankita, any of them? Said hi uh, to them. Whenever, yeah, yeah. We uh, me and Pradnesh, uh, yeah, we spend time whenever we are here in the same city. We like to get some food and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. I'd like to know uh, at the Aussie Open what really this is your debut in the main draw, you know, um, as opposed to the US Open where you've done so well for yourself. Uh, these courts are faster, aren't they, Sumit? So how are you adapting to these courts as opposed to playing in the hard courts at the at the USTA? That's that's for sure. Uh, the courts are uh, this year especially is quite faster than what it used to be. Um, that is why I've got some practices lined up to to get get myself ready and and, and be able to play because uh, my practice session uh, when I was doing quarantines were on different courts and when I played a match yesterday it's, it's slightly different than where I practice so I'm just trying to get myself ready for 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 next Monday. I want to talk about memorable Davis Cup tournaments, uh, tournaments uh, you know uh, matchups that you've thus far had uh, playing for India. You know, uh, being our singles player, anything that any tie that comes to mind that is very you're very fond of. I would probably say Spanish. You know, uh, uh, just because I got to see uh, a Spanish team, uh, especially bringing those people to be a part of Indian team at the same time to represent the country because that that was my first tie. And to go up against the the best team, you would you could you could you could arguably say that the best uh, Davis Cup team ever. Uh, I think that uh, that memory will always be there. And also, as as a, as a young kid uh, coming into the squad, it must have been wonderful being by the sidelines when you have you know guys like Ron Bopana, uh guys like you know Somdev, Lee Hesh, all around, just soaking in that little bit of aura of of Indian tennis. Unfortunately, uh, when I started playing, uh, Mahesh, he, uh, he, Mahesh has uh, has retired, but he was the Davis Cup captain, so I got to see that. Uh, Bobsy, yeah, I mean, uh, I've known him for quite a few, uh, few years, you know, uh, since I, when I was playing juniors, I would see him in the slams and I would be playing juniors. Uh, with Leander, I haven't spent much time with him, you know, it's, he's got his own things, he's doing his, uh, his, uh, his, I think he's also spending a lot of time in America where I haven't been much. And uh, Somdev was pretty unlucky as well because I could not I, I could not share a tennis court with him. He had he had also retired by the time I, I was representing uh, India in Davis Cup. But I would have loved to, loved to be a part of that team. Yeah, but I love the fact that he stood up for you when, you know, people questioned your, your commitment. He's the guy who wrote a letter to the association. And you must really value that a lot, even today. Of course, of course, of course. That's why it's part of my team. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Players players who you who you really have been inspired by, bro. You know, guys who uh, you, you grew up as a little kid, whether it was in Delhi uh, or in Haryana, saying, I want to be like them. Who are these the players you admired? David Ferrer, a lot. 
Wow. When I used to watch him, I mean, when I, yeah, when I used to watch him play tournaments, it would be just mind blowing. And when I actually like got to see him face to face, the way he played, he's, he is a bull. He's an animal. He would just return everything. <laughs> he, he, he gets no free points. You need to work. You need, and he will make sure if you want to win a point, you play your best tennis. It's, I've got mad, mad, mad respect for him. That's crazy, man. Because you ask yeah. any any of the current generation, they'll always talk about Rafa or or yeah. Nole or uh, you know Andy uh, uh, and Roger. But you know to pick up David Ferrer is, is just fantastic. It just shows the kind of. I mean, it's like guys when they talk about cricket, they'll always say you know Tendulkar and Virat and you know no disrespect, those are great players. Oh, yeah, but some course. people will say Rahul Dravid. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. The wall sure. or Pujara. Yeah. The wall, you know the yeah. guys who stand there. Yeah. Uh, so that that's a great choice there. And in the ladies side, any ladies player that you've really admired? I mean, for sure, Serena has done amazing. I mean, she's an amazing tennis player. What uh, what she's able to do from past twenty years or even more, yeah. it's phenomenal. It's it's incredible. So with a lot of single players are, are taking to doubles because you know it helps with a lot of skill sets, especially now because you know people are coming out of the quarantine and not having played as much tennis as before. Uh, have you, have you th ever thought of playing some active doubles uh, or are you just focusing will, on singles? I will be playing uh, doubles in my upcoming years, trying to focus on, on net game, you know, trying to understand uh, how it works uh, with the serve returns because you, you get to either, either you practice a bit or you rather put yourself in a position where there are things online, you know, like uh, playing, playing, uh, playing for points, playing, playing for to get better. And when it's a match, you would always want to choose a match situation than a practice situation. So I will be to to answer your question. Yes, I will be participating in doubles. In terms of physical fitness, I mean, there is the Rafa prototype uh, type, which is you know he's pretty much built like a bull, spends a lot yeah. of time in the gym, and mm -hmm. then there's the the Roger type, which is just skill mm -hmm. set. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. How much time do you focus on the gym and how much on, on racket skill and court skill, bro? I think the racket skill is something that you have from a young age. You know, it's not easy to develop uh, hands like Roger. This is something that you kind of, you could say, arguably say that you're born with it. But with fitness, yes, you can. I mean, it's also genetics. Don't get me wrong, but you have a better chance of uh, of creating that intensity around you than creating those hands what Roger has. Super stuff. Sumit, uh, all the best. I know you're going into this tournament. Uh, uh, I hope you take it one match at a time, man, and you progress and go beyond, beyond the second round that you did the last time around. We're all For hoping. Sure. What, what's the ATP ranking right now? 139? Is that it? Yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And we hope you're going to break into the top 100 really, really soon. And Looking forward. We have another top 100 guys in Somdev who did 62 at the time. Yeah? And 62. Yeah, yeah. it's been a while. Who has been a... Has been in a while. top 60. Yeah. Cheers, mate. All the best. Thank Have you. Thank you. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.